In this presentation, we will take a look at non-statistical sampling for tests of account balances. Note that we took a look at non-statistical sampling in a prior presentation with relation to tests of controls. Here, we're applying non-statistical sampling for account balances. So you will see some similarities within the application of the non-statistical sampling. Sampling unit for non-statistical sampling is generally a customer account, an individual transaction, or a line item on a transaction. The following items must be considered when we're thinking about non-statistical sampling. Identify individually significant items. So we're going to consider those items that are individually significant. We'll talk more about that shortly. Determining the sample size, selecting sample items, and calculating the sample results. We'll at some of these items in more detail now, starting with identifying individually significant items. Items to be tested individually are items that may have a potential misstatement that individually exceeds the tolerable misstatement. So let's read that one more time. Items to be tested individually are items that may have the potential uh, misstatements that individually in and of themselves, in other words, exceeds the tolerable misstatement. So if we look through the data and we have these types of, of areas that the, in the misstatement themselves for that individual item could exceed the tolerable misstatement, we want to pick those items out. These items will be tested 100% because the auditor is not willing to accept any sampling risk with regards to these items given their nature as significant items. Determining the sample size and selecting the sample. So how do we determine what the sample size is? This is going to be our formula. Sample size will be equal to the sampling population in the book value. So the book value population. And then we have the tolerable minus the expected misstatement. So tolerable misstatement minus the expected misstatement will be divided into the sampling uh, population book value or sampling population book value divided by tolerable misstatement minus expected misstatement times a confidence factor. Now this confidence factor might be given in basically our audit papers. We might have some standardized kind of factors that we would use something like a table such as this where the assessed risk of the material misstatement is here and then the desired level of confidence is going to be here. So if we have a high assessed risk of material misstatement and a high desired level of confidence, then we're going to have a higher number that we're going to be used as the confidence factor, in this case 2.9. If we have a high assessed risk of material misstatement and a moderate desired level of confidence, then we'll have a lower factor, high assessed risk of material misstatement, and a low desired confidence, then we have a lower factor. If we have a moderate, then of course, and a high desired level of risk, we're at this number. If we have moderate and then a desired, we're at this number, and so on and so forth. And you can see what the desire or what the effect would be in the formula given those numbers here in the confidence factor section of the formula. Calculate the sample results. Ratio projection method. So, we can, so we're going to have two methods that we could use to calculate the sample results. This will be the ratio projecting, projection method. Apply the misstatement ratio to, uh, in the sample to the population. So we're going to get the misstatement ratio in the sample, apply it to the population. It would look something like this. Assume the auditor finds $1,000 misstatement in a sample of 10,000. So we, we have a $1,000 misstatements in the sample of 10,000. The misstatement ratio then is 1,000 over 10,000 or 10%. Now, if we apply that to the population, we could say, well, what if the population uh, totals 300,000? the projected misstatement would then be 30,000 because we're going to take that 300,000 times the 10% and get the 30,000. So that's the ratio projection method. Not the only method though, because we could use the difference uh, projection method. Projects the average misstatement of each item in the sample to all items in the population. For example, assume the misstatement in a sample is 100 items uh, that total $400. So 100 items, which total $400, is the misstatement for an average misstatement of $4. So we have the $4, which is the 400 divided by 100, and the population contains 15,000 items. The projected misstatement would then be 60,000, or the $4 times the 15,000 items. So that's going to be the difference projection method.